Senator Bernie Sanders with us, our Brunch with Bernie Hour. As always, Senator Sanders uh, and his website, sanders.senate.gov. I encourage you to check it out. There's great information there. Senator Sanders, welcome back. Tom, well, great to be with you. Bernie, uh, the uh, Occupy Wall Street, we've been doing this wall-to-wall. <laughs> we've, we've, we have regular you know, correspondence in all these different cities come calling in and giving us reports and things. Um, your thoughts on what this means for America? And what, what's well, what I think is that what these people are doing is focusing a spotlight uh, on an institution, i.e. Wall Street, that is the most powerful, secretive, and dangerous institution uh, in the country, if not the world. So I applaud them for focusing that light on that institution. Uh, and I think they have touched the nerve and the nerve they've touched is that most Americans understand that our economy is in horrendous condition, that real unemployment is 16%. Just take a deep breath and think about what that means. That means that there are older workers who have lost their jobs, Tom, who may never get to work again. Uh, there are young people who graduated from high school looking for a job, and, and they've looked for years, and, and they don't have a job, which is what a terrible way to begin your work life. Uh, people who graduated college, uh, sometimes deeply in debt, are looking for a job that pays them a living wage. Uh, minorities, uh, people of color, the numbers are, are even higher than the, the general population. So you have a situation where Wall Street plunged us into this horrible recession, massive unemployment. Uh, people have lost their homes. Millions of people have lost their homes. Uh, people have lost their life savings. And, and then people are looking at Wall Street, the people who caused this crisis, this horror show, uh, the people who are bailed out by the American taxpayers, and then they say, well, what's going on in Wall Street? What's happening? What punishment uh, have, have they had? And the answer is, well, they're making more money than they ever made before. Uh, and I think, you know, 99% of the people say something is fundamentally wrong uh, with that picture. Uh, so I applaud the people uh, who are demonstrating around the country who are saying that Wall Street is responsible, that greed is responsible for this recession, uh, that the middle class is in rapid decline, poverty is increasing, the wealthiest people are doing phenomenally well, and we have got to address those issues. Uh, having said that, I think it's important that we go beyond just a protest and we come up with some very specific ideas uh, as to... Uh, what we should do. What does real, real Wall Street reform mean? Uh, the the Dodd-Frank financial reform bill took some modest steps forward, uh, all of which are being opposed vigorously by Wall Street lobbyists, but we've got to go a lot further uh, than Dodd-Frank uh, contemplated. Let me just give you a few examples of, of where I think we should be thinking. Uh, for a start, many people do not know that the six largest financial institutions in America, and that's the Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, that these six financial institutions now have assets equivalent to 65% of the gross domestic product of the United States of America. Got that? Yeah. Wow. That's over $9 trillion, six financial institutions. So the conclusion that I reach, and I think many other observers would reach, with that enormous concentration of ownership are two things. Number one, uh, there is very little doubt in my mind because of the business model on Wall Street, which is into big-time speculation, that at one point or another they're going to create another bubble, the bubble is going to burst, and they're going to come back to the tax base and say, hey, if you don't bail us out because we're too big to fail, we're going to make the economy even worse than it is right now, so you're going to have to bail us out. So it would seem to me to be eminently sensible to say right now, sorry, if you are too big to fail, you are too big to exist, and we have to break you up. Now, you know, you're a good historian, and you know that in the early 1900s, we had good Republican presidents, William Howard Taft, uh, Teddy Roosevelt, breaking up Standard Oil, and yep. the other big trusts. 27 companies. There you go. And, and it seems to me quite incredible that from a too big to fail perspective, we're not breaking up these guys right now. And second of all, from an economic point of view, our Republican friends talk about their love for a competitive free enterprise society. Uh, does it sound to you like we are in a very competitive free enterprise society when 
six of the largest financial institutions have assets equivalent to 65% of the GDP of the United States? I don't think so. Of the top four uh, of the largest financial institutions issue two-thirds of the credit cards in this country, and we know what about credit cards. They're charging working people 25 30% interest rates, usually outrageous. Um, they control half the mortgages in this country. We know the role that they played in, in subprime mortgages. Uh, so I think breaking up these financial institutions is a demand that uh, all of us have got to be engaged in. Uh, furthermore, uh, we met, uh, I'm on a committee which uh, hosted uh, Ben Bernanke of, of the Fed er, earlier in the week. And one of the points that I made to Bernanke, he was not in agreement, is that during the bailout of Wall Street, you know, a lot of people focused on the TARP funds that Congress voted. Uh, but even more important was the fact that the Fed itself, Federal Reserve, provided $16 trillion, that is an unimaginable number, in revolving loans to every financial institution in America. These are low-interest loans, very low-interest loans, to central banks all over the world, to major corporations in America, and to wealthy individuals. And my question to Bernanke was, is that if the Fed responded with such urgency when Wall Street was collapsing, why are they not responding with equal urgency now that the middle class is collapsing, and make similar type of low-interest loans available to small businesses all over this country who are starving for capital so that they can grow and expand and create the jobs that we desperately need. So when we talk about Wall Street, it is important to talk about some specific ideas, pieces of legislation uh, that we can fight for uh, to end the scourge that Wall Street has uh, placed on the American economy. So that's, that's a, a huge issue unto itself. Uh, second of all, uh, the issue that we, we stay on is, and must stay on, is that with 16% real unemployment in America, we need a real jobs program. I continue to believe that at the heart of a serious jobs program is rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure. It is the fastest way to create the jobs that we need, and it's not just blue-collar jobs. It's engineers, it's scientists, it's white-collar jobs. But everybody knows that our roads, our bridges, our tunnels, uh, our water systems, water is a huge issue that we don't talk enough about in this country, but city after city in America faces very serious problems with antiquated water systems, wastewater plants, <clears throat> high-speed rail or rail in general. We are falling way behind much of the rest of the world. China is investing over 9% 9 of its GDP in infrastructure. We're investing 2%. Let's invest. Let's create the jobs. Uh, that we desperately need.